Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. So folks, today I want to focus on uh, an important aspect inside X-Lights, and that's organizing your layout. Not so much where things are, but how they're set up in your sequence screen and why they're important to you and what tools we use in order to do that. So stay tuned and we'll get right in to the display elements box. All right, we're going to start out today by clicking Create New Sequence, Animation, and click Done. And over in the uh, Timing tab here, the, the uh, Timing Track, we're going to just select a time period, hit the lowercase letter T. And what you'll notice is you will obviously have all of your effect, uh, models, models and model groups listed here on the left side of the screen. I'll scroll up and down. You can see. Uh, this is uh, the layout I sequence in all the time, and this is the standard way that X-Lights sees your groups or your models inside X-Lights. So X-Lights creates what we call a master view that is by default set up randomly, usually the groups on the top and the individual single models on the bottom. And it does this kind of randomly. It doesn't, it doesn't, there's no rhyme or reason that, that I'm aware of, uh, but it is available for you to use and to sequence in, and that's great. However, the challenge is, is sometimes the way that effects are rendered in this master view don't exactly match up to the way that you want the effects to be rendered. What I will say, the most important lesson that you can learn from the master view is that all of your individual groups are here at the bottom, the individual models, I'm sorry, all of your individual models are down here. If you want to sequence at the model level, by all means, you can. Just keep all of those models on the bottom of your uh, uh, master view, and they will always have sequencing that will be shown through. With that being said, all of your groups, you probably want to keep them all close to the top. And the reason for this is if you have, let's say, um, let's say you have some arches here. You, you have arches here and you want to put a, an effect on them. And I'll just put some uh, effects on them there. So there, uh, let, me, let me make that a little bigger so you can see it. Number of chases. Uh, two, let's make the chase size much bigger. And bulk edit. And now you should be able to see them. So there's, there's the individual arches, but there's the whole display of arches. And those are doing one thing. Now if you come up here to the top, and we find the arches group right here, and we put an effect on them, like the on effect. We'll just turn them on. You'll see, and I'll use, I'll use white. You'll see that three of those arches that we place the effect on down below are overriding the effect that's up here, up above. That's how X-Lights designates what effects get sequenced. So X-Lights only uses one master view, the master view to organize the effects from bottom, all the way in the bottom here, with single models first, all the way up to the top, where the groups are on top. Now, this is all fine and good in the master view until you want to do something with, let's say, your whole house. If you want to put a whole house effect, I'm going to go down and delete those real quick. If you want to put a, uh, a, an effect on your all house group, um, we have to go find the all house. Here's that's decoration all house. Here we go. If we want to put, let's say the um, the bars effect, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna edit this a little bit. I'm gonna change it to red and green, and I'm gonna put uh, 3D, so you can clearly see like it fades out. So there's the all house. Uh, uh, actually, I want to put it on all display. Let's do all display. That makes it a little easier. There we go. And uh, so now you can see the bars effect on the whole house, on all display, that is. But if we want to put an effect on, let's say, the candy canes and the candy canes to show through, uh, let's change this to something that's going to stand out over top of that, which might be blue, light blue. Let's put the pinwheel effect on here. Let's edit the pinwheel effect. And you can see that... 
we have some blending going on. Now let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and make these a little bit thicker. So now you can see them. But what's going on here is the prominent feature is the whole house is down below at the bottom. And it's overriding what's here at the top, which is my candy canes. Now, to, to start with, one of the reasons why you can even see this blending at all is because of the sequence settings icon box here. And that is because the allow blending between models is checked. If we uncheck this, click done, and re-rendered the sequence. Now, after it takes forever to render, uh, now you see um, that the pinwheel effect doesn't even show up anymore. So what happened? Why won't the pinwheel effect show through? Well, that is because effects that are at the bottom that share a group or share uh, that are shared in the group, in the big group here, if you have the individual group way above it, then it won't show it won't show through so no matter what we do to this this will not show through until we go into our display elements box which is right here when we click on display elements we now have a list of how all of our uh, all of our sequence uh, sequenceable elements the the props that you've created we we can put these in a specific order now what I recommend that you do is that you take the time to duplicate or clone. You clone your master view. I can copy of master view here, and I can say delete me. Oop, if I knew how to type. Because I don't need this. Um, and then what you can do after you've copied this over is you can take the time and put all of your larger groups in order up above at the top of your list. And then if you sequence on the smaller level, you put the smaller items at the bottom closer underneath of it, then you won't have the issues. So, for example, we can take our all house uh, and all display and all yard. We can move those up. And put them up, up here at the top. Now, you see how it moved. It moved in this view. It moved on this um, master view here this copy it didn't move on this master view so there's something that we can do to help alleviate this which is we can select it again and we have this option to make master so after you've taken the time to organize this and in a second I'll show you how I've organized mine uh, if you take a second to um, make this and put these in order in a certain order you can click make master and what it does is it regenerates the master view so that it is now this new master view and you can already see I have a master view that's called or a, a, a view called new master so I'm gonna close the display elements box and now you can see that in the dis in our preview here in our master view that we have the bars effect up on top and the pinwheel down below if we re-render the sequence now because the master view has been changed and I don't know why it's taken so long to render two effects um, you can see the pinwheel effect is going on the individual candy canes but now the uh, bars effect is not on the candy canes if we go back into our sequence settings and we click allow model blending click done we re-render the sequence or you can just click on the item. I don't know why that render is hanging up like that. Now you can see the red and the green going over top of the candy canes in the whole house. So this is why it's important for you to begin to learn how to set up your master view or for, uh, for a, a better way to say it is your new master view. And that's what we do um, specifically in our new master view. What we've done is we've taken all of our much larger groups and how we determine this is what goes into a group. So for example, I have my all display group is a 
is derived of this over down here. It's derived of my all house group and my all yard group. Okay, so there is my all yard group there, and there is my all house group, and they're thrown into a group. They're a group within a group, and they're derived by a group of a group. If we go back to the um, uh, all yard, you can see that these are derived of groups as well. So these are all my arches, my mini trees, my stars on trees, and so forth. These are these are what I call the logical groups, and all the logical groups are just simply all my arches in a group called arches, all my candy canes in a group called candy canes, my column matrices in a group called column matrices. That's how uh, I take the time to set up my different props. So door restars, these are submodels, and that's a door restar. So I put the submodels in the group. Uh, there's the floods. They're each individual pixels. So I put those floods in uh, individual and so forth into a group. So uh, getting back to the display elements tab, what you'll find is that whenever you put your groups into a logical order where your much larger group is at the top and your smaller groups are at the bottom. And what I mean small, I don't mean size-wise. I mean the, uh, the uh, location-specific stuff. Uh, there's another caveat here I'm going to show you. If you do use submodels, for example, this is what we call the PPD wreath. We have this thing called wreath rings. These are these are submodels of the individual rings on on the wreath, and we that's the model that I'll sequence off of a lot. However, I also have s some submodel groups that I sequence off of for the PPD wreath, and those are awesome. But how do you handle it when you're sequencing? Well, we come down to the PPD wreath, petals, center rings, the center pieces, these are all the submodel groups here, but we put the wreath rings because it's the main prop. We put the wreath rings at the very top and we leave all of the submodels below the main prop. We do the exact same thing with the spinners and we do the same thing with the snowflakes. So if you want to sequence on the, the spinner arms or the spinner rings, we'll do that real quick. If you want to throw an effect on the spinner rings, we'll scroll down here. Um, and I'm probably going to have to re-render this. If we put a single strand effect like uh, on there and we change this to per model single line, we'll give it two and we'll change the color to white so that it, it shows up. And we're going to make it much bigger. Change the size. Oop, not too big. There we go. So now if we zoom in, you can see how model blending is at, at, this, at this point here. You can see that I have an effect going on the spinners on the ring, but also the whole house because the spinners are in the whole house, the uh, or the all display group. You can see that the submodel is getting the effect placed on top of it. But what if I want to put something on the spinner group? Well, I can do that. Let's say I put the spirals effect on the um, on the spinners. Let's do that. Okay, and. We'll put pink and turquoise on there, right? And we'll do that per model, per preview. So now you can see, if you zoom in, you can see the bars are going up. You've got the spirals going on to the main prop because the main prop group is up at the top above, physically above. It's physically located above these individual um, uh, submodel groups. So grouping and sorting and organizing your master, your new master or your master, creating a master view that actually allows you to open up to the sequencing and allows you to be creative and get the most out of what X lights can do. This is rather important that you do take the time to set up groups in such a manner. And you also have the understanding of how everything is set up in X lights within the display elements tab. So with that being said, there are a couple of things that one of the developers, Scott, has pointed out to me recently that I just learned about that's rather exciting and should be of interest to you. So in this copy of the new master view, this or the copy of the master view that I called delete me here, um, you have all of your groups and so forth. Now, I know I manually moved these around, but Scott has added a couple things to this menu. If you right-click 
on on this screen here you can go to sort and you can sort this by name you can sort this by we can sort it by name so if we sort it by name it's going to sort it by name of the prop so here by the name of the prop it's taking our individual models and putting them at the top because alphabetically that's how it goes you can also sort by and I won't click on all these sort by name but by groups at the top that might be a little bit more helpful now um, in my instance this does work really well it just happens to work out that our the word all is in displays all house and uh, I put my all yard up here that's important but other than that after after you've made uh, after you've gone through and done a sort, you can do your individual changes. For example, I know my wreath rings is here alphabetically. I have to move that up here to the top of the PPD group wreath stuff right there. Uh, I know that my spinners uh, and snowflakes, my snowflakes has to be at the top of my snowflakes uh, submodel groups, and my spinners have to be at the top of my spinner submodel groups. So once you go through and you create this, you have to come in here to the layout and you have to hit the save button. That's the most important thing. The only place that you can save your display elements, there's no save button here. So what you have to do is you have to click on the layout and click the save button. If you don't, you close X lights, you'll lose all of this work. So it's rather important that you go to layout and click the save button anytime you make a change to your display elements. Finally, as a, as a friendly reminder, every time you open up a new sequence, the default master view, the original master view that you saw, will be loaded every single time. It's up to you to come into your new display elements tab box and select your new copy of your master view, the one where you set it up to fit your home. And once you do, all you do is just click Make Master. And that magically puts everything in order. And that tells X Lights render from the bottom down here up to the top in your display elements view. So, guys, that's everything I have for you. Thank you for joining me. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Share the video if you really loved it. And then don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications for when we put it brand new content out for everybody to help fully, hopefully understand and help you out in the coming months as you set up your display. Finally, folks, this video is brought to you by the PPD Sequence Club. When you join the PPD Sequence Club, you get awesome, awesome holiday sequences each and every single month. You get one sequence per month with your membership. You also get access to awesome and amazing discounts from our vendor affiliates, and you can save hundreds of dollars each year, hundreds. You could pay for the membership on its own just by signing up for the club and get discounts such as 10% from Wired Watts. You can save 10% from Boscoyo and other Coro vendors. We have a number of vendors that offer standing discounts to all of the PPD Sequence Club members. So what are you waiting for? Join the PPD Sequence Club. We appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. Please leave your comments, questions, and suggestions in the video, down, uh, in the video uh, comment section below. And if you have any recommendations, feel free to put them down there as well. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.